Hi everybody, Martin the Flick Adventures again today and I'm tying this hollow fly squid. It's a nice simple pattern, um, imitates sort of these sort of mid-sized squid very well and it's very very effective and it's actually quite easy to tie. As always I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone who wants to support the channel, get access to the online Tying classes, some members only content and enter into the giveaways. Alternatively, you can like the video, share the video, watch it all the way to the end, comment below and of course subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos. All of that helps the channel to grow. So I've got my hook and my vice, this is a uh, Gamakatsu SP113L3H and this is a 3 aught. and I've just run on some clear fine mono or fine clear I've got to go up and down a couple of times I've not gone in touch and turns I'm just going to have a nice sort of bed um, uneven and it just gives a nice bit of grip for when you're tying on top of it and I'm going to put head, now this is head cement it's just nail polish right, nail varnish like Sally Hansen's or whatever um, not super glue right, super glue is not salt water safe now the fly that I had in the vise at the start, I've blended the bucktail in this one, right? It's chartreuse and orange and tan and white. Um, for the sake of the speed of the video, I'll just tie it with single colour bunches, otherwise the video would be far too long. I'll go pink and white, a nice sort of squiddy colour. Um, so, I'm going to start with a bit of pink, and basically, the the part that's the tentacles of the tail, I'm going to leave a bigger gap than normal between them and the hollow, or that it's actually reverse bulkhead ties, um, to sort of create that wee bit, slight bit of separation to get the squid shape. And uh, these first two ties are they're just ordinary ties, they're, no, they're not hollow. So I'll just get my bucktail and I'm, I want I like a fairly fine hair with a bit of wave, no too, no too crinkly um, and I, I don't want it to be from the base of the tail, I don't want it all hollow and this is quite long the hair, hair in this tail I don't really it's actually slightly that's not bad, I suppose. Like, as far as like wasting the hair, I don't. It's a shame sometimes to use the really, really good long hair. Um, so lengthwise, well, if you use the existing fly, I always like to do that and see where I want it to be. That's about right. So the tying point is just above the hook barb. Three loose turns, that's enough to hold it. And I'll just sort of push that around the shank. And that's not bad. Now the the tie-in point here I'd I I mean I've said this in other videos, you see a lot of folk they just come in trim it close. At this stage I'm going to taper my cut. Right? Um, I'm going to do this for both of these standard ties. It's going to let me smooth this portion where I'm going to tie in the eye extensions and uh, the underbody. So I don't have a bump. Right? Um, and 
the threads making contact with more of the hairs from the bunch so I think I mean that gives you a much stronger tie and there's a wee broken end there I'm just going to whip it out don't want a hair with a broken end and if I can if I see one I'll take it away just make sure that's in nice and tight and then I'll get the white hair this is the tail I want I've got a similar it's a similar bunch sort of slightly align the tips. I don't never stack it but I don't mind it being sort of aligned. I'll let that be a wee bit just a wee bit shorter than the pink. And it's just exactly the same. Right, I'll just take three loose wraps, it's just the weight of the bobbin, there's no tension. And I'll just squeeze that around. Check my coverage and that's no bad. And you can see my tie end point have crept forward to nearly the point of the hook. And that's nice, I've got a nice sort of that bright core and a nice uh, kind of veil. I mean, it's maybe not the most close copy realism, but uh, I mean, it will catch fish. Just a couple of wee short hairs, put that pull in case there's any you've not tied in. More head cement. Be generous with your head cement. Alright, the kingfish and that don't have enormous sharp teeth, but you can still add that wee bit of extra durability into the fly. Right, you know. And I'll rub that in, take away any excess. Right, you're not cheating or doing anything bad, you're just getting a nice durable fly that'll last you plenty of fish. Right, so I mean, easy, right? It's just the back of a bulk, bulk, uh, bucktail deceiver. I'm going to take some flash, I'm going to go with a seafoam green, right, which might seem like an odd colour. Um, an odd colour for a white and pink combo but squid you know when they're flashing and changing colour the you got all these different tones in them and all that and this I mean it, it's not I mean when you see the angel here there is a bunch it's quite strong but it's it's just a nice sort of pearl off the fly it sort of just gives you something a wee bit different and I just folded it over easy, just spread it around. And I'll just come back and secure that. Right there, it was spread. Now, we're ready for the eyes, and the eyes, I've got this here, just uh, 25, 30 pound monofilament. <clears throat> I've crushed the ends so it's ridged and I've got a wee and I've tied a knot in it and then I've just glued I've just coated it with uh, Loctite Super Clear you can also use Marine Goop uh, and it's very strong like it's, 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 it's really it's really well stuck on there um, you know just do a bunch of eyes at a time Set the eye flat and press the wet your finger and press the the monofilament and make sure it's covered with the glue. It doesn't and it, it doesn't go anywhere. And if you do lose an eye after several fish, if the fly's still in good order, I mean you, you can stick a, a new one on. Just cover the protect the bucktail with some uh, greaseproof paper, like baking sheet, and uh, reattach if you really need to. So I'll just tie that on. I'll do your side first. So I'm just behind the back of the hook there. I'll just wind back to my tie-in. 
and that's fine. And then we'll do mine. I find it easier. I find it easier if I can see. I can sort of see that one behind it. So just to set the length of the second eye. Look, give it a final check by squeezing them together, and that's fine. They're exactly the same length. Then I'll come back. I just moved that. There we go. Then I'm going to come all the way along, right? Because you're using it's round on round on round, right? You've got your monofilament thread, you're tying a mono stem onto a round shank. And then when I get to the top, I'm going to fold it back and tie along. Right, it, it increases the diameter here, which is, makes the the final uh, bucktail tie-ins a bit trickier, but the extra security is well worth it, right? It's not that big a deal. It was just a wee bit long. <coughs> Come back. Now I'm going to continue my fluorescent pink core. I'm using the Lag Lagerton. Uh, Mini flat braid. This is obviously fluorescent pink. Right, nice and bright. And because you're using the monofilament thread, you can just do the whole underbody. Right, so I'll come up to here. We'll get my head cement again. Again, it does no harm. It does only good. Right, and this will go in between the fibres of the braid. And I'll just I'll just use the rotary for speed. There we go. And some of this stuff up the top will be a bit less visible um, because the bucktail will be hiding it but the clear thread as I say you're, you've got you know it doesn't hide it in any way so now normally if I was tying just like a bucktail deceiver or a hollow fly I might come to like here for my next tie but as I said I went earlier I want to keep the I want to keep the separation slightly so that the shape of the squid um, is a bit better matched. Although I don't know that it makes a huge amount of difference, but I sort of it's, it makes me feel good about it, and that's what matters when it comes to your flies, right? If you like the look of it, if you like that shape. If you like that shape, that's going to make you more confident in fishing it. So I'm just going to go for white this time. I'm just going to maintain the white because there's there's plenty of pinkness in that core. So I'll just sort of clean that out. Any short hairs that I've not managed to separate on the tail, any really long ones will just come back in. Now, I don't want to totally separate it. I want, I want there to be some kind of cloaking of the eye, right? So that the the flies, the flies got to swim nice, right? But I, I don't want it, you know, just tapered all the way. These parts should be sort of distinct. That's what I'm going for. And I'm going to, as I said, it will be a hollow tie, and these are. Uh, Reverse ties. Take the two or three wraps. And just take your time here. Um, you're spreading this around quite a wide arbor now because you've got the. I mean, it's a big hook anyway, this SP11. And also. You've added to the diameter quite a bit. 
that's fine. We'll get my those my wee scissors. And I'll trim away the butts on this tie only. The rest of them are going to be The rest of them are going to be uh, left there as a bulkhead. Get some leaked resin. So again, just make sure you've got some reasonable distribution. The 360, all the way around, and hopefully nice and even. You can use a push tool. In this case, I'm just going to use my fingers. I like to sort of manipulate it. And you want everything straight, right? If there's, you don't want feathers sort of going off at, uh, hairs going off at an angle. Come to the front. I'll make my thread down. Right, I'm not tying on top, I'm just tying in front. And you can see, and you don't need to rely entirely on the thread dam, right? You can see if you like crush it with your fingers. You know, the tie in's secure, but you can adjust that. You can sort of break, not break the hair, but you can adjust the the structure of it and that helps you as well so that the those thread wraps just push it back nice nicely and we'll come up see about a third of the way my final tie in's got to be right at the eye so I need I want to have one two and then the final uh, I'll take a wee bit more angel here this will go in between the bucktails and don't go crazy with your flash but don't think you need to be too sparing either um, squid can actually be quite flashy when they're swimming about blinking their colours on and off so I've got that on the sides sort of spread that'll do it And now I'm just got to use like the same length of hair, right? Because you, the the uh, you're moving forward, so you kind of get that progressive taper anyway. And you don't need a lot. Quite, I mean that's it's quite a thin bunch, right? You don't need to, it's very easy to like, overdo it um, with these. So I'll just check my length and see what I'm going to leave for the the bulkhead. Although it's no, I don't want it to be too too big of a bulkhead. Just a wee bit to create a bit of bit of water pressure at the front. <coughs> Same again, just my, up the three wraps and then spread it around. Try and get it even. Right. If if you've got too much hair in one place, it'll no it'll resist you on the hollow tie. Um so you might have a bit like if you've got one bit that sticks up, there's probably more hairs there than and the rest of the section and that's why it's like it's it's resisting the, the pressure of the thread a bit better or a bit more 
than the other bits. So again, just fold it back. And at this stage, you can still, like I can see I've got a bit that's too heavy and a bit that's a wee bit sparse, so I'll just let go of the bobbin. Spread that again. Bring my thread up through. in front of that, create your re-thread dam. As I say, you can manipulate the hair. Right. Now obviously, when you're tying it, the hair's going to stick up. Um, the the one that I had in my vice at the beginning, that was, that had already been wet, right, and, and shaped, right. It's been, so it's, you can see the hair's taking the curve and the nice shape from being wet and dried, this one the hairs are still, although I've got the, the, the angle the way I want it, the hairs are still straight and they're not forming to the fly. Next to tie in, a wee bit more angel hair, right, I mean, and as I say, it's up to you how much of this you want to add. But you can you can sort of rip it out of the fly if you feel it's too flashy when you're fishing, right? It's it's that's not a problem at all, right? You can you can do that. But the angel here is quite subtle, and it you know it moves with the bucktail very well. It doesn't sag out like a like heavier flash can do. Another, another bit of hair, and I'm going to move slightly down the hair for these last two, so that I got a wee bit more bulk in the in the the butts of the hair, a bit more volume. So, and then I'm just I'm taking the, the hair from the tip, the longer hairs, and I'm separating out the the shorter stuff. Um, you can keep that for a wee clouser minnow or something. Okay, I'll just check my length and I'm just going to use Basically the same length of hair, right? The taper's going to happen anyway. I'll come in and I'm just going to leave these butt ends. And you see at the moment they're actually they look like they're a wee bit long, but when I compress them with the thread, or when I can put the thread and tighten them, they'll flare. And they'll, they won't disturb that, um, the bucktail below. Also, like the butts of the last tie in a bucktail are sort of um, helping with that. So, just the same thing, make sure you're fully around. If you've got a thick clump, just press directly on the clump with a your thumbnail and that'll open it out and distribute the, those hairs a bit better. That looks no bad. And there, don't, like, I've got a couple of kind of longer hairs in here, right, that I've just no stacked out or I've no realigned, and they're going to be slightly longer than this behind, but that's fine. Right. As I say, once, the once you've got the shape in the fly, and it's all wet down, it'll be 
it'll be fine, you know, it'll, it'll look just good. And you can work that bucktail. I mean, you watch, um, if you watch Bob Popovic's Tying a Beast or something on YouTube, like you'll see, he's, he's like manipulating the hair, right? You know, you use both, use both your, your hands, use both your hands to manipulate your materials and get them how you want. Right, and you can see now this is really starting to take the shape. This will be my last tie in a angel here. You know, tie it in, fold it back, and don't be too worried about where it sits, right? You, you know, you've been spreading it through the whole fly. As long as it's in there and it's folded. Put a bit more head cement. And we're ready for the last tie in. Might actually change tails for a slightly. I've got to switch to a different tail. I've got a, a, a wee bit hollower hair for my last tie in. Um, this, this other tail, which just slightly thicker hairs. Again, just to get that wee bit extra bulk. Right, and that's something you can do, right? You don't need to always just um, using this tail. Right, you can, if you've got a couple of tails, I mean, obviously, it depends on you and your budget, right, you've got to have five, six, seven white tails. Um, but if you, if you can, it can be quite useful. I mean, you can see this, the butts of this, hopefully you can see it's a much thicker air. And once I clean it out and I lose a wee bit of the material, it will be thinner, but... That's going to give me a nice, a nice bit of added volume at this final tie-in. But yeah, it's always a trade-off, right? Like this, this here, it's a bit stiffer, a bit thicker. And it's not going. It doesn't flow to the form just as nicely, or it won't flow to the form just as nicely. But I'm getting that wee bit extra bulk, which is going to help make the fly move further down so up to you you do what you like broken end so again get my length get my tie on three turns around and the hook eye can be a bit of a pain here, but you just need to work with it. It will go. You will spread the hair. You just need to. You just need to make sure you get things how you like them. Right. You know, don't. Don't be in a hurry. Right. Don't. All oh, right. That's it. It's in now. I can. I can just go ahead. Make sure it's right before you put in. And you see that as, it, as I pull that in. Those wee ends are flared, and they're not compressing the bucktail behind it, right? Even though they're... Yeah, I don't know what happened there, my camera seemed to stop. Um, so I was saying, the, as I've tightened this up, the butt ends are flared, and I'm going to just leave them, they're fine. Um, and they're not disturbing the tie behind, right? That tie behind's fine, because the hair's... The butts are up at an angle now, they're flared up at an angle. Especially being the hollow hair, it's going to flare more away from the shank and no disturb that behind you. So I'll just come in, 
Same as always, get my thread in front. And just so that I got a nice clean head here, I'm actually going to nearly bullet tie this, right? I'm not I don't have a lot of space for a thread dam. So I'm actually going to let the thread come up as a push back. Just going to let it come up onto the, the deer hair a wee bit or onto the bucktail a wee bit. Just compressing it and it'll get me my shape. Quite nice. And then your last few wraps just they don't need to be tight, right? Just to help lower that. And that there is lovely. So the last thing is just a wee quick quick finish. And another one for good measure, because it does you no harm. Now you can actually use the bit finish to sort of shape that thread head a wee bit, make it nice and neat. And then the fly's ready now to we'll get about a thinner head cement here and just coat my thread wraps. And then when that's dry, the fly can be dipped or it can be run over the top and hung to dry. Or you can use a hair dryer even if you're in a hurry, um, and it'll get you that lovely shape, and which will be in the thumbnail of the video anyway. So here you go. That's the squid, the hollow fly squid, or bulkhead squid, whatever you want to call it. Super effective. Um, anything that eats a squid, right? So if you're in the, the eastern seaboard of the US or whatever, striped bass, obviously they like to eat squids in the rips. Um, I, I mean, I use them here in Japan. Amberjacks, kingfish will eat this. It, you know, you can use it dredging, you can stick a popper head on it. You can put a sinker on your leader and fish it with a T20 shooting head over structure. I mean, it's a really good pattern. And everything eats squid because they're delicious. So, tie some up. Take lines, guys. Bye.